All right, so about three years ago, I created this animation right here as kind of a general purpose concert visual. Um, and there's some problems with it, but also it's been three years and I've learned a lot about composition, lighting, idea, execution, even Blender's made cooler tools. So what today's video is all gonna be about is creating a better version of that old animation and really just to show like what I've learned in that time and how I would have done better. And hopefully you can take something from this and apply it to your own process. So this won't be more of a step-by-step -step tutorial, this is going to be kind of like concept, idea, execution, lighting, all that fun stuff. And if you want the step-by-step -step tutorial, I made that available on my Patreon today. Uh, so if you want to check that out, if you're already part, if you're not a part of the Patreon uh, and you want to know about it, uh, you get 10 free procedural materials a month. Uh, you get project files from these tutorials. Uh, you're going to get two uh, bonus tutorials every month. And for the last tier, when I'm doing uh, client work, I show the client work, talk about budget, all that fun stuff with client work. And if there's no client work, then you'll get some extra stuff there. So if you want to check that out, hit the link in my description, really helps support the channel and you'll get some cool stuff. So with that being said, let's dive into this. So here's the original older animation and there's a lot of good things about it, but let me point out the things that are bad about it. The first one is it's just too fast to be a general purpose concert visual. If you are a VJ running these visuals at a concert, um, you're stuck at this speed. And if you want to be able to speed it up, say you start with a slower animation, you can speed it up so you have that flexibility. I've taken that from you as a VJ. So you can only use this at like really high energy parts of the show. Um, that's, that, that's a big issue. There's just a lot of things missing. It's kind of empty, but let's take the concept. So what's the concept behind this particular animation? Uh, we have this material, which is kind of this Voronoi Manhattan pattern, uh, metallic. It's got these greebles that are extruding out and we have the triangle. That's the whole vibe. So we're taking the concept of the greebles, the material, the triangle and the lighting and let's make it better. So let me show you the new animation. So here's the new animation. And before we get into it, we'll just quickly break down what I did differently. One is I made a much better greeble situation. Uh, you have these random pieces and different shapes and stuff like that. And once we get into building it, you'll, I'll show you how much better this is. The, uh, the, the uh, Manhattan kind of Voronoi pattern is better. And in fact, not only is it better, but we added some grit and grime on top of that pattern too to make it more detailed. Uh, we now have better glowing elements. So we kind of have these sticks coming out. If we go through, you can see up here, we have these kind of glowing sticks coming out. And in that Voronoi material as well, we were able to add these glowing dots that really create much more texture, a better feel. Um, in the animation, it's slower. And we have camera shake. Now, if you're gonna make this more general purpose, I take the camera shake out because it'll be like it'll look crazy. So I'll just have no camera shake if that's what you can do. But at this speed, camera shake's great. But also the animation is slower. So your the the VJ can speed it up if he wants to, or he can keep it at the more slower, relaxed, chill pace. Um, I also like the color better and notice there's volume. We have volume. So in the original animation, it was just like a pure black abyss of nothing. But in this case, we still have the same lighting, but we added volume so we can fill this space with something interesting. And we also have the particles flying by really creating this immersive experience. So that's what I did differently. That's since then learned a lot of cool things, better execution, better concept. So let's go ahead and kind of show you the cliff notes of how I built this. So you can, if you're you know, familiar with geometry notes, familiar with uh, creation, you should be able to copy it. All right, so first I'm gonna use a cube cause I'm lazy. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and select these faces and create my V shape. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but that's the game. I'm gonna take this V shape. I'm actually going to exaggerate it more to make more of a chasm. And then um, we're also gonna get that anchor point up here to make it look a little bit better. And maybe it's a little too dramatic. So I extended it by eight, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and apply all transformations. So that way we can control the angle properly because these are both angled this way. It's gonna make a problem with geometry nodes. So we'll be able to control that if we apply all transformations. We also need to create our particle. And normally you can do this in geometry nodes, but since we need to bevel this object, We'll have to do it externally because you can't bevel in geometry nodes as of right now, which is honestly my biggest complaint. I don't know how they built it, so I can't really, I don't know why. 
All right, we're now in geometry nodes and I can go ahead and create a subdivided mesh here with our kind of stable geometry. And let's get a instance on points, which is really gonna be the driver of everything. So we're gonna pull that in and bring it right there. And let's go ahead and we can scale this down and notice how they're not angled properly. Let's fix that. So now that since we have access to normals, we can just plug that into a align Euler to vector and plug that into the rotation and it's going to fix everything for us. We're gonna get a random value assigned to a vector and then you can just go ahead and take that max and bring it down and now you have random, randomness. We love it. And just subdivide your mesh until we can do that. Now, here's what's cool about this. You really have a lot of customization available to you. See that max, we can actually dictate how dramatic you want to have your uh, greebles. So you can take it and make them really flat or you can make them really dramatic. Now I want them to be kind of dramatic, but you can make it look a little bit more like rando mesh or we can do that, which we're going to do right about here to really make it kind of sci-fi looking. Now we're going to create our particles. So we're going to get a distribute points on faces node. Now we can get a random value on the offset and now we have our points. We're going to get an instance on points and just plug that same particle right in the instance and then you can bring that scale down to be appropriate for your design. And, and now you have your particles that you can then change the position of whatever you wanna do, and it's still gonna be able to work as a loop. So now we have our particles. All right, I then created my stick particles here all around with a random, with a separate geometry and a random value so that we can go and randomly place them around the scene. A little bit of a process, but now we've kind of created our whole scene and now we can assign materials and do lighting and all that fun stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this whole thing so we can create our triangle. So we're gonna get a circle and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and just bring the vertices to uh, three and then bring the fill type to ingon. We're gonna add a wireframe modifier and we're gonna go ahead and put an array on it to create the three. So now we, so I used a uh, empty as my object offset, created this object here, and then um, we're just gonna keep it there. And now we have our triangle. So we can bring this back here. All right, now we need to create material. So since we made everything in geometry nodes, we need to get a set material node at each of these positions connecting to our join geometry. So I'm gonna make this guy metallic, make it mid gray right there, and I'm gonna call it Vor. And then we need to create another material and call it glow. And that's just gonna be our regular emission. So we're gonna assign all of those materials to their proper pieces. The sticks are gonna have the glow material and everything else has the Voronoi material. All right, heading into shading. Now we can create that material. So I'm gonna go here to slot one, which is the Voronoi. It's a really cool material that I love to make. So let's go ahead and get in a color ramp. And we're gonna need two of these. Let's get a Voronoi. Now that I've set up everything here, we're gonna go ahead and take the Voronoi pattern and the noise pattern with the color and mix them together to now create this interesting look. And then as a bonus, I'm gonna plug that Voronoi pattern into a bump node. And that's gonna allow us to get a little bit more fun in those areas so we can see that and the light's actually gonna be able to interact with it. I then took another Voronoi texture using just using the distance so that we can create these dots. And then I also plugged that into the emission and the bump so we can create bumps and the dots. And actually I need to crunch that in a little bit more so they fill in each of those holes so that we can create this really interesting kind of particle look. I'm gonna copy the color here and paste it into paste it into the glowing element and then just make it glow here. And now I realize these are far too big. So I'm just gonna make them a little more skinny. So I'm just gonna make them a little skinnier so they're not so uh, distracting. So there we have it. Now we have our random glowing sticks. We have our random glowing dots and everything looks awesome. And we can also apply the glow material to our triangle and make it a little bit less bright. There we go, now we have our whole system created. Now we can move into animating it, looping it, camera shake, and lighting. All right, so now that my camera is set up, I'm gonna go bring my world brightness to uh, all the way to black, and we'll just go ahead and get our area light. So I'm gonna position it right above my triangle and bring up that strength. And as I always love to do, just give it a slight blue hue, really just makes all the difference. In the world settings, we're gonna go ahead and give it some volume. 
And of course, bring that density down to something manageable and bring that light out of camera view. There we go, now we have our lighting. We're gonna go ahead and instance this down the line so that this will be a looping animation and you won't be able to see the end because the volume and the lighting will put it right out of sight. We're gonna start it at the negative eight and we're gonna end it at the positive eight, which will now animate it properly and we need to parent this object to the camera. So now the triangle travels. So now the triangle travels with it. So now we have the light and the triangle parented to the camera. So now we everything's tracking. And if we go to the end, it's a seamless loop except for that viewport glitch. All right, and the last thing we need to add is some camera shake to make it loop. And that's a really fun process. So we'll click on our camera and I'll just make the camera shake on the up and down. In my original animation, I did the camera shake on all three axes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add one keyframe, hop over to the animation tab. Make sure you click on your uh, X Euler rotation, hit N for the end panel, and we're gonna add a noise modifier. So now it's crazy like that. So you just gotta have, go ahead and bring down your strength. So we're just gonna bring that strength down to something much more manageable and palatable. So maybe 0 0.02. And then also that scale can bring up to maybe six and then bring that strength to me 0 0.03. And now we have camera shake. And if you want to loop it, just go ahead and restrict the frame range. We're going to start it at frame three and we're going to end it at 248, 238 right there. And then just blend it in. So you can actually take this and say, blend in that so that it'll loop. So it doesn't just abruptly start, blend out that. And then now if we go here to the end of the animation, it's going to loop perfectly. And now, we are done. Really cool animation here. We can even go ahead and add in a little bit depth of field just to finish it off. So bring that down, bring that focus distance to our triangle. And then bring that up Tell you like the how dramatic the depth of field is. And we have created a really cool, far better than the original animation. And then all you have to do is go ahead and get your render settings going. So we're gonna go here to the printer icon, go ahead and I'm gonna go use a FFmpeg video encoding to MP4 output to perceptually lossless render, render animation. And you'll have something really cool to work with and use for whatever you want, which you're allowed to use this for client work, whatever. I even saw one of my animations uh, at a UFC fight, which is cool. I didn't go to the fight, I saw it on TV. <laughs> but regardless, we're done. And again, if you want to see the full step-by-step -step breakdown, that's currently available on Patreon. Uh, look out for more really cool tutorials. If this is your first time seeing me, most of my tutorials are step-by-step. -step. This is just more of like a concept-based tutorial. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.